Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. I am John Kurtz. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do right now. If you're into college football, specifically conference realignment, multiple videos coming at you every single day right now. And please like the video and comment. I'll be honest, I'll level with you. It helps me. It helps drive those views up. But also, your comment may be used in a future video. And I like the conversation. I want everybody here to be a community and have a conversation on this page. So let me know. Even if you disagree, even if you think I'm stupid, let me know in the comments. You can also certainly tell me I'm awesome. I'd appreciate that too. Today, we're talking about teams in the Big 12 working together. There was a great article released by Max Olson of The Athletic detailing some of this and really just everything that's happening within the Big 12 right now. Tons of layers to it. I would highly suggest reading the entire article and subscribing to The Athletic right now more than ever, man. Those guys, and this is not an ad, hashtag not an ad, but those guys do a tremendous job with their coverage, and I really appreciate the work that Max Olson is doing. So here's the gist of it as far as what Big 12 teams are working together. I'll be honest, this caught me off guard a bit. I was surprised to hear that he says the leaders at Baylor, TCU, and Texas Tech are talking on a daily basis and working closely together on what's next. Now, yes, they're all from the state of Texas. I get it. There, there are some relationships there that would naturally lend themselves to some of that. But if you're talking about trying to move out west, right, to the Pac-12, which is where a lot of this eventually leads, I'm surprised to hear that those would be the three, more on that in just a moment. Here's some more from the article. It says that unity was easy to see last Monday in Austin at the Texas Senate committee hearing. Of course, that's been referenced a few times. Uh, maybe, you know what, let's just play the clip one more time. We'll play the clip from the Texas Senate hearing. What's your athletic budget? It's over 200 million. It's probably 220, 225 in that range. Where does that put you in the US? Uh, depending on the, how you count, probably first. And that's without a winning football team of late. It's in, in spite of our, in spite of our football team. We, we've been winning, just not like we like to win. Three and seven against the Horn Frogs. Um, <laughs> so um, maybe your fan base would rather lose to Alabama than TCU. So I hope everybody enjoyed that as much as I do, and we'll continue to uh, work the heck out of that here on this channel. The schools are looking out for each other, but they're communicating frequently with. Oklahoma State as well. That's the other school mentioned here by Max Olson of The Athletic. So the group here, the four that you have, Texas Tech, Baylor, TCU, and Oklahoma State in this article listed as apparently working together. That sounds like a little pot of four, right? Potentially out to the Pac-12. That's been discussed a lot, whether or not that was going to include K-State or Houston, maybe an Iowa State, maybe a Kansas. You've seen all of those rumors really thrown about there, but here it comes down to the Texas schools plus Oklahoma State. And Max Olson adds there's a sense of optimism among these schools, according to his sources, that a spot in the Pac-12 could eventually be on the table. So that is really what we're talking about here. Now, first of all, I am based in Manhattan, Kansas. That's bad news for K-State. If that is true, if the optimism rings true, and if these schools are really working that closely together, that is bad news for a school like K-State, who would very much... I think it would be in their best interest, be served to be in one of these groups if there are going to be four that go on a life raft to the Pac-12. It's going to be your best bet in terms of a ceiling for the money that you can make here. Now, this also could wind up being bad news for the Iowa States and West Virginias of the world, maybe Kansas. But as has been discussed here on previous videos, you can look at my video with uh, all of the tiers, and I'll link it, in fact, in the description, all of the tiers of schools and what options they have in the Big 12. K-State is the one school in that group that does not really have any other option. It's not really been rumored or mentioned with anybody else there. West Virginia, I still think, has to prove their worth to the ACC. I don't think that's any kind of definitive thing, and I think they have to be very cognizant of the fact that they can't really turn down a Big 12, Pac-12 option because if they got left out of the ACC, even with the wonky travel and all of that that would be associated with it, it would still financially be more viable than, say, taking an under $10 million per year uh, payout from the AAC if that were the route that they were going to go. And Iowa State, I still think it's a very long shot with the Big Ten, but that's at least been mentioned there. So, you know, I'm sure Iowa State and West Virginia would be mildly uncomfortable about reading this update as well, but I think it rings more true for K-State. But the, the things that are very surprising to me about this, one would be that Texas Tech would be really interested in doing that, that they would be interested in bringing along their two, I guess we can call them little bros at this point, right? In the state of Texas and TCU and Baylor, I, some of you will bristle at that. I apologize. I don't totally mean it like that. But Tech is much larger in terms of enrollment, much, much larger. It's like three times as big as the enrollment at TCU, right? 
I would think that Tech would be more interested in bringing along Oklahoma State, K-State, maybe somebody else, anybody outside of the state of Texas, because this can be an advantage. This is a chance for Tech to really get a leg up and elevate themselves to the third best school in Texas definitively. I mean, like maybe they're there right now in terms of just overall profile, but if we're talking about football, they're certainly not. And this would help out Tech recruiting. If they can get out to a major conference at TCU and Baylor, do not. All of a sudden, that opens up some new doors and avenues for Texas Tech. So that's why I saw that and raised an eyebrow thinking about Tech working closely huh, with Baylor and TCU on that front. And all of this goes back to what you've heard behind the scenes about Houston in all of this, that Tech would not be thrilled about Houston coming along for the ride if it's in a revamp Big 12 or if it's out to the Pac-12, any of these scenarios, because that's another Texas school that has some pretty good resources that could elevate themselves and usurp you in the pecking order in the state of Texas. So I would think in Tech's best interest, TCU, Baylor, Houston, keeping all of them out of a power conference while you are still in a power five conference would be in the best interest of Texas Tech. And this could be a real opportunity for Tech to try and seize. And then there's the Pac-12 element of all of this. I don't think the Pac-12 is crazy, certainly about adding a small private Baptist school in Baylor. TCU also small. They're obviously Texas Christian University. So that's been mentioned culturally as something that might not be a great fit for the Pac-12. Plus, if you're getting into Texas, I mean, you've got Texas Tech. If you go Texas Tech, you've got the biggest school that's there in Texas. You've got the school with the biggest presence in terms of alums in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Again, because TCU is so small, bigger Texas Tech presence there, right? So I would think the Pac-12 wouldn't be necessarily needing to get all three to feel like they're into the Texas market. I would think that Texas Tech would be enough there. Now, I, I guess maybe the play here and the pitch from all of those schools is, look, you take all of us three, that's an even bigger stronghold that you have in Texas. That sells it more to the state. That's going to allow you to recruit the state of Texas more. I just always viewed TCU and Baylor there as one, complicated, and two, not adding enough value, basically, to overcome those complications. But this article may be indicating that that is not totally the case. We'll see. Maybe this is Baylor sources really trying to push a narrative. But, man, I trust Max Olson. I think Max Olson does an excellent, excellent job, and that matters a lot here. When you're talking to conference realignment, there are a lot of people out there who will float a lot of things and throw a lot of things at you. Max Olson is somebody that you can trust. The Athletic is somebody that you can really trust here. So I do, I do invest some legitimacy into this as far as I am concerned. But kudos to TCU and Baylor for doing this because that's what you should be doing. Like this is, I'm going to give a shout out to my co-host Mitch Fortner on my daily radio show who said this to me earlier today. It's like Survivor. Like it is like Survivor, the TV show, the game show, right? where everybody kind of works together. You have to work together, but sometimes little groups will splinter off and then there's a lot of backstabbing that goes along with it. And in the end, everybody's out for themselves, but they do need to use some alliances and other schools. Well, I say schools. In this case, obviously it's schools and survivor, it's people, but you have to use other sources to really get what it is that you want. And that's what's going on here. So if you're TCU and Baylor, man, you are cozying up to Texas Tech if they're the key to getting out West, even if you're going to preach Big 12 stability on the home front and say, hey, we are all about keeping the eight teams together, making Texas and Oklahoma pay up, yada, yada, yada. Man, seriously, kudos to TCU and Baylor if they're really doing this and doing this effectively at, at getting in bed with Tech. Click subscribe if you have not to the channel. Talking all things conference realignment here. I'm trying to give the Big 12 and the eight remaining schools a voice here on this channel. Like the video, comment. It helps me out a ton. It gives you an opinion and a voice, and you may be featured in a future video. So please continue to do so. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.
So today we are talking Big 12, Pac-12, what it was that was discussed between the two commissioners on their six-hour first date last week. Max Olson from The Athletic was the first to have that report that that would be happening, and he's now the guy giving us some sense of detail after the fact as far as what happened. And I would highly encourage you to check out the entire article. It's worth a subscription to The Athletic right now to be following along with all of this. Max Olson does a tremendous job, and there's a ton of information beyond just what's going to be talked about in this video in the article. Hashtag not an ad. I'm not getting paid by these guys at all. I just really respect the work and what it is that they do. But so Bob Bowlesby came back with a sense of cautious optimism and assured the meeting went well. That's according to The Athletic in this story. It says the two commissioners did talk concepts of a scheduling alliance, merger, and other potentially creative solutions for working together as expected. So yeah, that lines up with the report going into the meeting. No details, nothing further in detail was offered to The Athletic as far as the specifics of what was talked about there. And the meeting from Big 12 sides was phrased as more introductory and exploratory in nature, less about sorting through specific details. Now, as expected, the, the Pac-12 narrative on the meeting is slightly different, says Pac-12 sources were quick to frame the Bullsby meeting as a very preliminary get-to-know-you type of visit, which you have to understand. The Pac-12 right now is not in as desperate a position as the Big 12. So the way that they're going to characterize all of this is different. They don't need a positive image to be out there. The Big 12 would love to be able to say, look, we talked all kinds of specifics. The Pac-12 is very interested. That's how the Big 12 would love to posture this right now because the Big 12, frankly, is desperate. The Big 12 is the guy at the bar at midnight that's just looking for whatever it is that he can find. Uh, the Big 12 is trying to move on down the line to every girl he sees at the bar and find something. Pac-12, not in that position. Obviously, they're interested enough to listen but don't want that to be out there publicly. Maybe they'll hit you up with some text, but they don't want to be seen publicly chatting at the bar, right? So you're going to get two different kind of vibes here. But it does say the Pac-12 felt like for the conference, it made sense to take the meeting. Sources believe, again, I'm quoting from the article here, that the Pac-12 is in a good position, no moves are imminent, and they need not rush to make any. Uh, Klaibkopf is serious about putting all his options on the table and seeing what fits best for his membership in the future of the Pac-12. So yeah, I mean, the Pac-12 is in a position where they can't really be turning down many meetings because they, they do need to do something to make sure they keep USC happy. And that's really, if you read into what's happening in the Pac-12 right now, it's just all about keeping USC happy, much like the Big 12 is all about keeping Texas and Oklahoma happy. So what can the Pac-12 do to shore themselves up long-term is really the question. Whether or not that happens with the Big 12, ultimately anybody's guess and seems still more unlikely than likely, but they are at least going to be open to hearing that. Now, here's something interesting. It says, as many sources have stressed, it would be naive to believe Texas, Oklahoma, and the SEC only spent a couple of months putting their plan together. The Big 12 and the Pac-12 have an opportunity to make massively important decisions that redefine their conferences. These deals don't happen quickly. Patience is required as hard as that will be in the Big 12. So true. And I just, I cannot emphasize this enough. I've tried to do it already, but I'm glad to see others that are very trusted sources saying this because everybody wants a quick solution. Everybody really does. And I even understand what the point Ryan Hyatt made on this channel last week who covers Texas Tech that, hey, moves have to be made to counter the SEC fast before we let them just blast away on a rocket ship from the rest of the college football world. But this is not going to be quick. The Pac-12 has a lot of options to seek out. They can look at the Big Ten. They can look at the ACC. They have other options for some term, type of scheduling alliance, teams that they could poach, whatever it's going to be. It does not need to be them acting fast to link up with the Big 12. The only people who want something to happen quickly are Big 12 fans, like fans like you or I that are just worried about what's going to happen to their school, right? You're the one that wants some sense of security. Nobody likes uncertainty, and unfortunately, that's what Big 12 fans are going to have to deal with here. But you should also remember, and this is a fair point raised in the article, that that is also something that will make Texas and Oklahoma a bit uncertain as well and will drag out their future okay so if there's a silver lining in all of this being super reactionary and making some kind of crazy quick move like this would actually benefit texas and oklahoma if you want to make texas and oklahoma squirm as much as you can if you want to milk as many dollars as you can out of them waiting and plotting your best move over the long term is definitely the best case scenario here it makes oklahoma and texas sweat out the financials of everything, the cease and desist, what's going to happen with any litigation with the Big 12, right? It gives it more time for all that to play out because if the conference splinters and breaks up, all of a sudden, Texas and Oklahoma, they, they win. They get to go to the SEC. They broke up the conference, and now they're not going to have to worry about the crazy exit fees 
if the conference doesn't exist. So at least take that as a silver lining, Big 12 fans, while you're sitting here having to wait and squirm and think about what it is that's going to be the future of your team. And just to finally drive this point home with one more comment from the article, this is really back to the, hey, you're going to have to be patient part of this. It says there's at least some thinking among decision makers in the Pac-12 that they don't need to expand and could be better served trying to form a strategic alliance with the Big Ten and the ACC, right? So the, the Pac-12, look, I don't blame them. I, I would do that too. Like you're going to just start going down the list. You want to move up the list in terms of things that could add more value to your conference. The ACC, the Big Ten, they're definitely higher up than the Big 12. So you start there. You work your way back down. If it eventually gets down to the Big 12 and if something does make sense, great. If not, they'll do something else. So patience, Big 12 fans. Unfortunately, patience. I will say it's great news for those of us that uh, have a YouTube channel, host radio shows, podcasts, because it'll be more content. The fodder is going to be here for a while. So, hey, come along for the ride. Click subscribe if you have not to the channel. Talking all things conference realignment here. I'm trying to give the Big 12 and the eight remaining schools a voice here on this channel. Like the video, comment. It helps me out a ton. It gives you an opinion and a voice, and you may be featured in a future video. So please continue to do so. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.